Welcome back to the Multiverse Into the Cineverse. Uh, we're going to review Blue Beetle today. Got a fun activity with some actors and got some good Cineverse news from this past week. But first, play the intro. And from here we go. First, like most of these multiverse people watching right now know, is we go over our weekly recaps from the past week. TV shows, movies, documentaries. Let's start with you, Ben. What did you watch this past week? This past week. So obviously Blue Beetle, we're going to be talking about that. Um, But then besides Blue Beetle, watched like 99% of Thor. Not quite all of it. I haven't quite finished it yet. Watched most of it. The first one? Yeah, the first one. It's kind of what I remember. Like, it's. I think people hate on it. I think it's probably the second best Thor movie, right? Because I, I would put Ragnarok. Yeah, yeah. In it Thor is. Movie. Yep. But, um, but, you know, I, I don't think it's bad, but it's not. I feel like it's, it's of the origin stories in the MCU. It's one of the lower ones, but I think it's still good. And I think, I think Chris Hemsworth kills it as a more serious Thor, which is what we had originally. So. Yeah. Um, Why uh, ninety nine percent? Yeah, like what's that one percent that's missing? Like five like minutes leaves. when Loki dies or something. Before we left. Spoiler. That's a, that's a big spoiler. But okay. <laughs> but uh, no, yeah. So, anyways, and then Iron Man two watched that, and uh, that was it for movies, TV shows. Been watching um, what's it called? Uh, Married at First Sight. It's what we've been watching reality TV actually for the first time in a while. It's kind of like a change from like the bachelor and stuff like that. Basically a couple gets put together without seeing each other and gets legally married right away. And then they have to like go on their honeymoon and they have to try and get to know each other with that. The idea is that both of them have signed up for this because they are fully ready to like actually commit to a relationship and be mature and like figure things out. And so the people in charge of the show, like, match them together based off of their qualities and different things. So that's the idea. Does it work super well? That's kind of what you expect, but it's fun drama, you know? So that's all good. Do they get but a yeah. prize at the end? Like usually well, has like a prize or something. Like do they get a they prize at the very last yet. a year or something? Yeah, they haven't brought that up yet. So I'm curious, but I don't know for sure yet. So um, yeah, Ben and his wife actually went on that show and that's how they got married. Just so you know. Oh. Yeah. We have a close connection to the show actually. So. Yeah. Yeah, it can relate well. Mm-hmm. It works. It works. Yeah, you know? but that's all I have to say is, it, you know, if, as long as it works. So. Cool. Is that all you saw this week? That is. Yeah. Very slow week. Nice. Kendrick. I'm sad to inform I don't have much of a more eventful week than Ben. Um, <laughs> shows. Oh, I watched the Depp versus Her documentary. I actually have one episode left on it because it's three episodes. Um, um, it's a new Netflix show, but it was so entertaining like every time i watch it dude i'm just hooked like i can't stop watching it um and it's so interesting to see the case in a documentary format where they're kind of showing you know like they'll talk about things in the court case to show how social media reacted and show like what actually happened in real life and stuff and yeah i mean uh interesting stuff and then um rebels i've been just watching as much as i can because the soga comes out tomorrow at the time of this recording um i'm watching watching through important episodes i'm on season two only about to finish season two with the important episodes and um i i I love rebels i'm not gonna lie i've become quite a lover of it i i think it's really really freaking good i'm debating if i like it more than clone wars i'd have to watch the whole show finish it but there's a chance i could say that we'll see and it's not there yet but we'll see because i i I like it more 
this is how I'm guessing your feelings are right now. You wouldn't think that if you had to watch every single Rebels episode, but yeah. when you're just watching Probably the a good one, that's true. Episode, that's true. Then yeah, I mean, it's great, that is valid. Right? I personally just enjoy were shows against each other. Full show Clone Wars is definitely true. better quality and content. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah it's true. not even close. But I do like the timeline of where Rebels is more than Clone Wars. I'll say that because I'm more of the originals fan and I like yeah, more you of are. seeing That's true. That's where true. Darth Vader is and seeing how it's five years before New That's Hope. True. So I enjoy no, that. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. And it's it's really good quality content. When it gets to like the main meat of the story, that's it is really, really good. Yeah. So. so that's how I feel so far. And then movies, um, just saw Blue Beetle, which we'll talk about. So Don't have you seen wait, I was gonna ask you a quick last thing. Have you seen the episode where Ahsoka fights Star Vader yet? I've this. watched that clip, but I haven't seen the episode. But yeah, I know that clip. That's probably one of my favorite. It's really good. Yeah. yeah, solid episode. Okay. Um, so for me, weekly recap TV shows. I started Severance. I saw the first three no. episodes. What do you think? Pretty good so far. Um, I Shoot. heard my dad likes it, and he was saying that it gets like better and better each uh, episode. So I'm excited to see how where it goes and everything because. I haven't heard one person say it's bad. I heard everyone loves it. Yeah. So I'm curious to see how it goes. And it's interesting, the uh, split minds. Like it, it's interesting. I, I like the concept. So do you feel great, like you're right, figuring really everything out already? Kind of. I, I w- I'm definitely confused. Okay. I just don't know what they're going to do with it. Like what I, I can kind of predict. Oh, I have a prediction, but who knows if it's right or not. We'll see. But it's pretty, it, it, it's, it's pretty good so far. I'm excited to see how it ends and everything. Um, and then for movies, so I finished the Spider-Man movies. So Amazing mm-hmm. Spider-Man two, um, it's better. I think than most people give it, I think people hate it. I gave it a three out of five, but it's still that like little cult following that say they love it. I don't get it, but it's still like a good three out of five. I think, um, Spider-Man. I'm definitely the one that likes it the most out of, the, out of us three, but yeah, I, yeah, yeah, definitely you are. Uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, it's worse than Amazing Spider-Man 2. I'm just not the biggest fan of that movie. So <laughs> That's funny. That's I'll good. give it a three, five, three out of five or two and a half out of five. But I, oh, wow. It's not oh, that. Wow. wow. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. Far From Home, I uh, gave it three and a half out of five. like that one a little bit better, I think, because of um, Iron Man's death spoiler. And then Jake Gyllenhaal, I just like really good. And then I don't like the scrolls in it, but and then story is pretty good and then spider-man no way home is definitely my favorite spider-man out of all the spider-man i've seen four and a half out of five just seeing andrew toby and uh what's his name tom holland together it's just so good the story has its like flaws where like time and everything which i just hate time travel and stuff but yeah just the the well the action and everything and just seeing everybody together was just so dope spider-man lotus film speak we had on last week is <laughs> absolutely correct that i've <laughs> Wait and me, hours. And me. You gave it a two two out of five, then, right? I gave it a two out of five. I hate That's it. still too high. <laughs> it's a point. It's still. I want to give it a zero, but they still made it. But it, it's a point five out of five. No, really? no, it's you need to see wow. it. Like you need to see it just to see how bad it is. Like that's yeah. like that's which is crazy. No, like like but I wasn't rating it against so boring. Yeah, and I did like I'll clarify again. I wasn't rating it against regular movies. I'm rating it against fan films, and I do think there were certain CGI aspects, cinematography aspects that were decent. And so, like compared to other fan films, two out of five, I still hated it. I did not enjoy it. Let's make that straight. But That's no, good. it's. I mean, I still gave it something because I'm like the credits there for how much effort they did put into it. But it's not a good movie. No, it, it's, it's bad. I saw. My Paramount Plus subscription was ending, so I was like, I'm just going to watch some movies real quick. I just put them on. Instant Family uh, with Mark Wahlberg and then the girl from Insidious. I don't know if you guys know who that is. You watched uh, Instant Family? Yeah, it was just odd. It was popular. I just put it on the movie, so I saw it. I haven't heard of either, but I just saw Mark Wahlberg. I was like, oh, I'll watch it, you know. Uh, two and a half out of five. I think it's a good one to watch with your family, but not people our age, I don't think, would be the biggest fan. So hit, hit or miss humor, but two and a half out of five. Good one with your family, though, I think. Shooter, well, I, li- I like that one. That was Mark, Mark Wilberg as well. Three point five out of five. Then you were saying something about a show too, so I want to watch the show now because what you said, and I like the movie enough to watch the show, so I'm curious about that. Jack Reacher was all right. It was basically just Tom Cruise being Ethan Hunt without the spy stuff, without the Mission Impossible, I everything. Bet. I bet, but it was still like 
pretty good movie. A little bit slower, but pretty good movie. And then Stephen Curry is, underrated. He has really one action acting role he plays. Yeah, it's him, himself, yeah. basically. Yeah. The action's in it good. The story's a bit boring, and but the action's in it good. I won't deny that. And then Stephen Curry unra- underrated. Uh, I want to see that. Loved it on Apple TV. Okay. Great. I mean, if you're a Warriors fan like me, then you'll love it. And then if you're just an NBA fan, just to see Curry's story, because he was... Yeah. Like it's called underrated, and he definitely was underrated. Really, only cool. recruited to Davidson, and then where he is now, greatest shooter of all time. So it was cool. But Chapman, I was going to say documentary of all time, right? We all agree. Definitely. Um, with your No Way Home review, Chapman, I like how you said Doctor Strange shouldn't have got wrecked. Like he should have been more powerful. I thought that the whole movie. I was like, why did Spider Man wreck him? Like that makes no sense. I hate yep, that. Yep. It was the only way for it to work. But exactly. I, I didn't like the writing on that. Like, I didn't like the writing either. Messing up the spell either. Like, yeah, I didn't like that. Why did he? I don't know. I just some things like I said, like, I didn't like, but just yeah. Toby, Andrew, Tom, like yeah. all together and the villains and everything, they're, get, I feel like they got yeah. redeemed a lot. Like just so dope to see. But. Yep. My thoughts are so, dope. Um, all right. Now we're going to move on to our movie review, which is Blue Beetle. Does anyone have a synopsis first? I want to ask that to make sure. Does anyone have four that? teenagers I mean, going to a sewer, sewer and uh, get ooze on them? <laughs> Oh, wait, sorry, you were right. uh, wrong, wrong movie. movie. Yeah, but it's up to you. Uh, I mean, it's up to you guys. No one doesn't like Chapman. No one doesn't like Chapman. I want to hear Ben's though. Okay, yeah, Ben, let's, let's hear you. Yeah, do it, Ben. Yeah, like mine. Apparently, oh, I, like, my, I like yours. Yeah, ben. I really like I yours. Synopsis, you know, aren't great, so I feel a little sheltered right now. Okay, I'll say it then to protect your feelings. <laughs> so there's a kid named uh, Jaime Reyes from uh, his family's Hispanic, a uh, bunch of, I guess, immigrants, right? Weren't, weren't they immigrants? I don't want to. Yeah, well, they lived in like, Paris. So, so, yeah, I guess they were immigrants from America, right? I think so. I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, yeah. And then um, Jaime Reyes, he comes back from college. He's a graduate and everything. Wants to make money, makes, make money for the family. Um, loses his job with his sister. So just life's tough right now for him and his family, especially being a Hispanic family going on right now during that time. Um, meets a uh, really cool girl, goes there to get a job from her, happens to run into a well, like a scientific beetle thing. It connects to him. He becomes what he calls the blue beetle and then has to learn how to become a superhero and also help his family at the same time, balance his lifestyle out. And he's still a teenager going through puberty and everything. So that's blue beetle. Any other things you guys want to add? The stakes are high. The stakes are very high. That's what I want to add. Um, we're going to start with our scores, though. Acting, we'll start first. Kendrick, you go first with acting. Acting, I gave a 3.5 out of 5, too. Um, and I mostly give that to Zolo Maraduena. Um, He was by far the standout for me. I really liked him a lot. And I think he'll do good for the DC future. I obviously loved him in Cobra Kai as well. So I'm glad that he kind of kept up just what I like about him in Cobra Kai. Kind of just really chill, but pretty fun guy and stuff. So I enjoyed that. But everybody else, like the family was all right. George Lopez was really funny to me. Uh, villain, I thought, wasn't that great at all. Uh, so no one's acting really out to me except for Zolo. So I gave it 3.5 out of 5 for him. Oh, yeah, I also gave it a 3.5 out of 5 as well. I, I don't know how to say his name. I just call him Miguel because of Cobra Kai. <laughs> That's okay. I love Miguel in this. I, yeah. I thought he was perfect. Like, perfect Jaime Reyes. Perfect Blue Beetle casting, in my opinion. Like, I thought he was definitely really good. Uh, yeah. Gabriel Jesus was also really funny as well. I think some parts were like over the top, but I think that's like a writing issue, but he was still funny in it, and I really liked his character. And then I also liked Bruna, the uh, girl that his like love interest and everything. I thought she was pretty good as well. Not great, like Miguel and them, but I still think pretty good. And then everyone else was all right. Not like bad or like good or anything. Just, I think pretty mid. And then the villain was terrible. Like, um, I'm sorry. I didn't like it. So three and a half out of five. Ben? Three and a half out of five as well. Agree with everything you guys said. Um, Zolo, it is Zolo, Marijuana. I mean, he, the reason, I will tell you this right now, the reason they are keeping this movie as a, how did he say it? It's it's, uh, the first character of the DCU, but it's not the first movie of the DCU. The reason is because of Zolo. It has nothing to do with, well, it's it's really not once you watch the movie. I feel like like it's pretty obvious. The reason that it's, the movie's not a part of the DCU is because the movie doesn't live up to what the DCU is going to be. Uh, but Zolo that's is. Right. And that's Zolo right. does. I think that's perfect. I think if I'm James Gunn, Peter's from watching that movie, deciding if we're going to cut it or not, I'm sitting there going, 
he's perfect for this yeah. character. Agreed. To him. And and I think that's where it lies. Three and a half out of five, though, because there wasn't anybody that I think as far as acting goes, I don't think there was anybody that was like bad, like bad, bad. But there were definitely some stuff we'll get into with screenplay. Um, there was yeah, definitely the villain screenplay was a no. There was no justice hurt. given to the villains at all. Yep. No due just diligence, due diligence. Yeah. Um, so it, I mean, it's kind of sad because there it, it really was as far as the writing goes. And we'll get into this. It's just a repeat of so much stuff, and so the acting there wasn't really much for the actors and actresses to do in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, I so he, Lopez. I think he's way too much. He was, uh, yeah, too much. But I, 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 I like, but you hate him now. It was the oddest. Like, it's one thing to have him in in parts, but he was like way too, way too much. much. Okay. okay, that's my thing. Okay, cool. Uh, cinematography. I gave it a three point five out of five, and that's mostly to the action scenes and Blue Beetle. When he first turned to Blue Beetle, I was worried. Looked really good, and then the suit clean really good all his action scenes his suit like just basically everything with blue beetle i really liked and most of the action scenes as well everything else i don't think they were really trying i think they put the focus on blue beetle's thing but because of that 3.5 out of 5 for me <clears throat> yeah i really like the palette especially in the beginning overall like the brightness of palmero city i think was hit perfectly That's it was true. really well on display Yep. It, it gave you that vibe of I want to be here, which is it's an immig- it's an immigrant influx city is what it is. And that that's the vibe I got. Right. It's the city that really puts itself on a hill as like fashion lights. You know, it's great to come here. And that's what it felt like. I, I wanted to go to Palmyra City. Like it looked super cool. So I did go to that. And that's definitely a uh, key to its palette, color palette and different things like that and how they um, shot a lot of it. And when they shot it during the day and stuff like that. Um, besides that, the action scenes were really, really good. Like you said, I think that Blue Beetle, um, looked amazing and a lot of it was practical, which I thought was really cool. I liked how they, they made all of his movements practical and then just added CGI to it, which is what Sam Raimi did with his Spider-Man movies. He did all of the movements practical, but then added CGI around it into it. So that was really cool. Like um, when he's kind of a spoiler, when he's like moving the sword around where it creates, he does all the movements himself, but then the sword like creates the CGI. So I, I think things like that looked really, really good and were done really well. So I'm going to give it a four out of five. Cool. Uh, I went four out of five as well in the cinematography. I give all that to Blue Beetle in the action. And um, th- there is a good amount of it, I guess. Um, but I couldn't give it to really anything else. I just thought the visually and the way his powers looked and the way his suit looked was amazing. Um, every time there was an action scene, I was, I loved to see his powers and I think it didn't look all VFX crappy or anything like that. Like the flash, like it looked really solid, especially for this movie. I didn't expect it to be that solid for how it looked. Um, so I give all of it to blue beetle and the action pretty much. Nice. Ben, give me your What's enjoyment score. Give it again? Four. He said four. four. Okay. Uh, enjoyment score now. Bad. Enjoyment. Um, I give it a four to five. Uh, so huh, this was very hard to come up with. I, I was three and a half to four, mainly just because I think for me, it, how do I put this? Like this, there are parts of the movie where I was like, ah, oh, this is just so much like every other cliche superhero movie we've seen. Like, it's just too much. It was overwhelming at times because I, I just knew exactly what was going to happen. I knew what was going to take place. It was just so annoying to me. But then they surprised me with multiple parts. Like um, things will get into spoilers, but you know the the quote unquote death that happened, I thought was played out super super well, like over the top well. It did not have that scene had no place being in this movie. Like it was it was just way too good of a scene to fit with the rest of the film. And so there were parts like that that really raised my enjoyability. The family aspect, although too crazy and too intense at times did hit home pretty well. I do think it was over the top, but for the most part, I think it was really well done. And I just think that that emotion carried my enjoyability score higher because I did end up feeling connected to the character in this movie, which I didn't think would happen with how cliche it was. So four out of five. Kendrick enjoyment score. I went three out of five. Um, I still, at the end of the day, felt a lot of just genericness. Um, Even though there were things that I think, we're little cherries on top. I would say nothing was enough for me to raise it more than just a mid enjoyment score um, at the end of the day. So three out of five. 
So I'm right in between you guys. I'm a 3.5 out of 5 for enjoyment score. Just parts I really like. The story and the villain is what really bothered me. The villain is just, just the way she was written. I just did not like her. I like Ignacio, though, the Iron Man guy. I liked him, though. I thought his character was pretty cool. Um, but, yeah, just a generic story that... I, the way like I would compare it, it's like Iron Man, Homecoming, um, like kind of yeah. mix like it's just like it's a lot like homecoming i thought like homecoming when i saw it it's just, iron man oh, 2 2 yeah yeah with iron man 2 so it's just just like some parts i liked and some parts i didn't so 3.5 out of 5 um now we're gonna go to genre it's action adventure kendrick give me your your genre score i went three out of five on there um i think action wise the action was really well done but i mean adventure once again it's does not an adventure so i'm not gonna give it much for adventure i just for action i thought the action was really good so three out of five yeah i also gave it a three out of five as well just for the action they do go on adventure aspects like where they go to um the her the girl's mansion and stuff like where her where she grew up and stuff so they, they go on like adventure stuff here and there but like nothing yeah. Crazy. If it was action sci-fi, I think because the Beatles really no, for four especially when they break into the stuff too. But since it's action adventure, three out of five. Yeah. Ben. So I'll just say when I this is kind of like a loose rating because when I originally did my job score, I did it based off the letterbox score, which is action science fiction. So just a little different. I gave that a four. I think for action adventure though, it's gonna have to be a three point five. I think the action is still well enough deserving to be high to make the score higher because I think it's some of the best superhero action we've seen in a little while. Like it was genuinely really cool. looked really good. I like the injustice aspects, although they hyped that up a little bit too much. I felt like they're, if they were involving injustice, but could have been involved a little bit more and looked a little cooler into this movie, but with the action, but overall still the action was great. Um, adventure though, like again, it's so cliche. It's just not really an adventure anymore. If you're telling the same story, like, the first time that story is told, cool. It may be an adventure for me. The fifth, sixth time I've seen this story over and over again, it's not an adventure for me anymore. So, yep. Uh, what would you give it though if it was action sci fi? You said four out of five? Four out of five. What about you, Kendrick, if it was action sci fi? I go four out of five. Four out of five, okay. But on Letterboxd, it says four out of five, but on Google, it says action adventures. That's interesting. Probably trust Letterbox more, but I'd probably give yeah, it a four out of five as well. Yeah, it's, I mean, it, well, either more. way, you know, I mean, adventure is interesting to talk about just because we always bring that up. So I like bringing it up still because, like, yeah. adventure is on everything. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Plot screenplay, I gave it a two out of five. I, like, I, it's just generic, very generic, like, superhero movie where it's a hero gets powers and then going through puberty as well. Kisses the girl at the end, like fights a random villain. And then the villain screenplay was terrible. Uh, Some yeah. of the family's screenplay was really bad. Gabriel Jesus's character sometimes was too much a little bit, even though some parts I laughed more than I didn't like. So screenplay, I just feel like Blue Beetle was the only one that had good, good screenplay. Mostly the sister, I just yeah. didn't like her. Also, oh, just try to five for plot screenplay. Ben? Yeah, I mean, honestly, the same thing. I gave it a three out of five. Uh, parts of the plot, the fact that they were able to still excel with the family emotions and it got me a little teary-eyed, that that raises it for me because they were able to somehow, I don't know how, like thinking it through, I don't know how they were able to get me to do that because I still think that most of the movie was just so generic, but somehow that scene just was really, really well done. Um, so there are aspects that were well done, and I think like you said, uh, Zolo's character, I think, was written actually really well. I think yeah. I think they did a good job with him. Besides that, though, plot wise, like I'd give the plot maybe a three and a half out of five, but the screenplay I'd probably give a two and a half or two out of five. So I'm rounding in the middle at three because the screenplay is horrific. I mean, there were parts with the the lady villain that just uh, I knew exactly what it was going to be from the trailer when I saw she was playing it. Anytime it's a lady like her with her personality, I don't mean that in a bad way, but the personality that she was giving off in the trailer, I knew how she was going to be in the movie. Like, what, if she, what if she was a man? Would you say the same no, thing? Well, okay, sure. But <laughs> it, it's just, it's, just a cliche, it's a cliche character choice where like 
she's trying, you can tell she's going way too hard at being this like bad A that's just not. And that's, she's old. I could tell that's how it was going to be from the trailer. I didn't need the movie to tell me that's how she was going to be. I just knew right away. Yeah. And she had to be a woman because of the gender norm thing that they mentioned about the business going to a man and stuff. So she had to be a woman. So that's why Kendrick, I don't worry, I got you, Ben. That's why I had to be a woman. So she couldn't have been a man, Kendrick. So why would you ask that question? Yeah, why would Kendrick, you ask that question? What's your plot screenplay score, though? <laughs> <laughs> I gave it a 2.5 out of 5. Um, I agree with different aspects of what you both said. Like, yeah, plot's just so generic, like you said, Chapman. But Ben, you're right. Like, there's the emotion stuff did hit a little bit there here and there for me, like with the with the death and stuff that we'll talk about. But I'll say more on spoilers with my plot and screenplay issues and everything. But yeah, like at the end of the day, it was just generic, like super generic. And I've seen better origin stories um, than this one. So 2.5 out of five. Yeah. Dope. Um, give me your letterbox score and overall score, Ben. Oh, am I there? Oh, okay. Perfect. You're good. You're good. I lost you for a second. Letterbox score and what? Overall Over. score. Okay. Letterbox score 3.5 out of 5. Uh, overall score 3.7 out of 5 if I round on my numbers. Technically, it will actually uh, action adventure genre, then I'm going to a 3.5 out of 5 exactly. Um, sci-fi action, then I'm going to a 3.7 out of 5. So it's in that range. But Letterbox score 3.5 out of 5. So, Kendrick? I overall ended up being a 3.2 out of 5, but my Letterbox is a 3 out of 5. Oh, yeah, my overall score is a 3.1 out of 5, and then Letterbox gave it a 3 out of 5 star. So, so all close. Uh, we're all, we're all yeah. close. 3, 3.5, which I think that's what the movie is. But people were saying, like, it's like, I don't know. A lot of people were, like, overhyping it, I think. But I guess that's their opinion. That's okay. That's okay. Um, so 2023 movies, uh, where's it fall on your guys' list for 2023 movies that you've seen? Kendrick? Yeah, it's funny. It actually, so I've seen 40 and it's at 20. So literally right there. Right in the middle. Halfway. Okay. Okay. Middle. Nice. It's 31 out of 52 for me for okay. 2023 movies. Ben? Yeah, I was going to say it's it's 28 out of, I think, 45 for me on the year. So that's, uh, I guess that's, it's a little below middle. Kind of like you, Jeff. And like it's, it's not quite there in the middle, but yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Now we're going to rank the DCEU movies. Uh, you, you don't have to say it. Just how many have you seen? And then where is it in between? And then which movies is it between? You don't have to rank all of them. Just you go ahead, Ben. Oh, I'm, I'm ranking have... all of them. I am okay, listing all 15. You are there getting you my 15. Your DCEU ranking. All right. Let's see. Then ask for it. Let's hear it. I don't care if you ask for it. Everybody wants to know okay. my yeah. DCEU. They do. They list do. Let's BMT's, do BMT's thoughts. Let's BMT, let's go. That's just how it is. So at number 15, we're starting off with the worst movie in the world, Justice League. Joss Whedon's, it's, it's horrible. It's just not good. Um, then we're going Wonder Woman 1984 at 14. We're going Suicide Squad, the OG Suicide Squad at 13. The only redeemable part of that movie is Will Smith. And I'm actually, as much as I love Margo. Oh, and Margo, you're yeah. right, you're right. I, I love Will Smith, and I think they should have kept him around. They probably just couldn't, though, because how bad that movie was. Um, Shazam Fury of the Gods is at the 12 I still enjoyed that movie but it's definitely the weakest of the ones I enjoyed Birds of Prey at 11 I think that's a fun movie and I love Ewan McGregor in that movie uh, Blue Beetle at 10 so I guess it's in the top 10 but it's 10 out of 15 uh, cough cough um, and then I have Black Adam at 9 I really like Black Adam if you know me I have the 4 or 5 Batman vs Superman at 8 I think that's a great movie uh, Aquaman at 7 Shazam one at six, Wonder Woman, the OG at five, Man of Steel at four. Yes, The Flash at number three, The Suicide Squad, the new and improved 2.0 at two. And one of the greatest comic book movies of all time is Zack Snyder's Justice League at number one. Uh, not a bad list. I like it. I like it. Except Flash. Uh, Kendrick, what's your list? <laughs> Ooh, you're gonna love mine. Okay, uh, so 15 here. I haven't seen Aquaman, so Aquaman will not be in this list. Um, last okay, place okay. is Joss Whedon's Justice League. Um, next, I have Suicide Squad 2016, and then I have Wonder Woman 1984, and then I have Shazam: Fury of the Gods, and then Batman vs Superman. I'm not a big fan of that movie. Um, then Birds of Prey. That's a bad. 
<laughs> and then not really. And then Black Adam right after that. And then I have Blue Beetle right above Black Adam. Then Shazam one, Man of Steel, Wonder Woman one, uh, Snyder Justice League at three, Flash at two, Suicide Squad twenty twenty one at one. Woo! Got nice. some hot stuff in there. Nice. Nice. Listen. Interesting. Jack, give me your DCEU ranking. You guys want my DCEU ranking? I do. Uh, I'll start from right. worst to best. So the worst movie is for sure Wonder Woman 1984. I <laughs> hate that movie. Point five. I I hate that movie. I'm never seeing it again. When I watched it, it's not worse than Justice League 2017. It is definitely worse. They're, than they're, both, like, worse. they're both down there. I, I mean, they're both down. Next is Suicide Squad. Uh, yeah, Will Smith and uh, Margot Robbie. That's it. Then Justice League 2017. And then Shazam 2. Exactly. Levi. Good stuff. Like, but everything agreed. else, terrible. Agreed. Birds of Prey's next. Just not the biggest fan. Batman versus Superman. Good aspects, but story was the whole Martha thing. Wasn't the biggest fan of it, but the, I like the action. I like Henry Cavill and Ben Affleck together. I thought that was a really cool duo. Then it'd go Blue Beetle, generic movie, but still solid. The Flash, you know, I didn't get the people were saying it's the greatest comic movie ever and stuff, and like what oh, James Gunn was no. saying, but it's it's pretty good still. Like it's not terrible, but it's pretty good. Then Black Adam, I just loved all the action and everything. No. Then Shazam, good start for Zachary Levi and everything. Like I think it's a solid Shazam movie, like a good Shazam movie, how it's supposed to be. Uh, then Aquaman, love Jason Moa. It's like Lord of the Rings underwater, love it. And then Wonder Woman, great. Gal Gadot is a solid Wonder Woman. Then Man of Steel, just I think that's just such a, such a good Superman movie. Then the Suicide Squad, James Gunn did something special with the Suicide Squad, I think, and I'm sad to see those characters back on the screen. Um, and then. Zack Snyder's Justice League is for sure number one. I like that. That's, That's my DC I like that EU one. ranking. Um, now know, we're going actually, to. Pretty, I just couldn't believe. As long as you've got Suicide Squad, Wonder Woman eighty four, and Justice League around the same rating, then I'm cool with the order. But yeah, pretty much. Now we're now we're going to get a uh, spoiler segment for Blue Beetle. I want to start with one scene that was kind of outrageous. <laughs> So him and the girl are sitting on the bed in their parents' mansion, and she's talking about her yeah. dead parents. Yeah, and he has a boner. Ah, yeah. and he you noticed it. that too? And he covered it. Would you uh, get a boner if your girl talked about dead parents? Just so one because they almost kissed. There. It's because they almost kissed. But they were talking about dead. You would kiss the girl if they were well, talking about her dead parents. Well, I will just say. Also, I mean, just say. <laughs> When you're, going through, when you're going through puberty and you're really attracted to a girl and she's about to kiss you, I think that uh, I think something pops up. That's, I don't care what you're talking about. I honestly, if I was in your, his shoes, I don't even think he was thinking about what she was talking about. He probably, if Definitely she no, he was lost he for sure. He probably had no clue Definitely what lost. she said. And all he was Which thinking about was, does. I am an inch away from this girl. I'm about to kiss her. And that thing was rising. <laughs> That's all I can show. I'm just surprised Zachary Levi like, didn't have one with Wonder Woman on, on that date. <laughs> True that. No, I just thought that scene was pretty funny, but yeah, it was because he stands up and he's like adjusting. I, I thought I was the only one that noticed that, but I'm glad you guys noticed it too. Oh. Any other uh, things you guys want to say? Yeah, I mean, just I'll start with outrageous first. I think George Lopez was the worst of the family as far as being over the top. I just feel like it was just so know. over. The sister was I even worst. Think, yeah, sister was the worst. Oh, I actually thought sister was fine no. for him. And I'll I'll say I actually she wasn't funny like, at all. So I've been around a lot of Hispanic family like my life, and I felt like the nana was almost a little too much too. Like they kind of almost exaggerated. Oh, I forgot about her. I was like, oh. it was almost offensive because I feel like I mean, yes, the, the grand nana's like she's they're like like you know extra and fun and stuff like that, and mysterious, right? You know, yeah. and they're tough and they're crazy. Like I love that aspect of it. But like it was a little too much still, and like the way they wrote it too was super cheesy at some parts. When she picked up the machine gun, I didn't laugh like other people did. I thought that scene was really cringy. Yeah. People were dying at that scene. Yeah. Dying. I, I have family next crazy. to me. They, was, they were dying at parts that I did not think were that yeah, funny. Well, yeah. Same. Like they were laughing. There's, 
not the theater though just the people next to me like it was a family and they just were dying and i was like dude it's not that funny yeah um um the villain was i felt bad for her she was bad i it was it was not good bro she was i didn't like i didn't like her character at all like i'm sorry i liked uh ignacio though i think he had a good redemption arc at the end yeah he, uh, he did i liked his uh uh, death redemption arc. I think at the end when he saw his mom yeah. <laughs> and everything, I thought that was a really cool scene. Um, and then he drags her out and everything to the fire and they explode and stuff. I thought that was a really cool scene. I like that. They, it was cool to give him that redemption arc. Yeah. Um, no, I got I got to see George Lopez is actually pretty funny to me. I <laughs> I enjoyed um, his over the topness a little bit. Um, I do think he was in it too much. I'll agree with that. Like you guys are saying, but yeah, definitely um, a little bit too much. But I think it was funny with the car and the way he acted about different things and stuff was pretty fun. Yeah, and I got well, to with George you. Lopez. You know, I mean, I watched that show, that show growing up and stuff. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I think, I think he was definitely funny, but I think, yeah, like you said, a bit too much at yeah. some parts where I'm like, okay, like calm down, yeah. George Lopez. But I well, think he yeah. was still funny though. Like I didn't, he was. I didn't hate him. I don't think he was the worst in the family, but no, no. definitely a little bit too much. <sighs> that sister, man. Like I, pretty off the bat, I was like, she's not funny. Like I was like, she's yeah. just your class. Like, they were they're trying to make house. her annoying and stuff. And I was like, dude, stop. Like they get it. Yep. I, I agree. I agree with you on the sister. Mom, mom sure. and dad were good. I thought they were. I like the dad sure. a lot. Yeah, me too. I like the dad a lot. I thought his uh, death scene, I was worried that it wasn't going to look good and that it was going to be kind of cheesy and everything. But I thought it was a good scene, like a good solid scene for him uh, personally. And then yeah. Miguel seeing him and stuff. I thought that was pretty Yeah, cool. I loved Miguel seeing him. That part was really good. And also with the the villain guy seeing uh, his family too. And she's like, yeah, yeah. So that was good. Flashbacks. I thought that was cool. Uh, I liked it too when he turned to Blue Beetle. I thought that was a dope scene. I think he looked like good. I was worried that the Blue Beetle suit and everything was going to look bad and that the way he was going to transform and stuff like was not going to look good, but he looked good. I like Yeah, him. he did. Everything was good with Blue Beetle. Like, I, I have no complaints there. Yeah. Yep. His, his fighting and everything was great. Um, yeah, the way they did his powers and his action was perfect, in my opinion. So, you know, Blue Beetle's, like, robot voice, that's the only thing I have an issue with. It reminded me of Homecoming Spider-Man Suits Girl. I actually thought of that, too. I thought of that too. Have you seen Young Justice at all? No. So, I like the Young Justice Blue Beetle voice. I was hoping they were going to bring him into it, but they didn't. They just used whoever, I guess. I don't know who it was. And I was just like, it just reminds me of like the homecoming girl in when Tom Holland gets the suit and like after this protocol and stuff. And he's like, stop. stop. I was like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, that's just the homecoming girl, but whatever. It was, I guess. It's, it's it a was small issue. Definitely a lot of homecoming parallels there, dude. Like I sing on the whole time. I was like, this is really like homecoming. Yeah. To be honest with you. It was weird. It was weird. Yeah. I know one of my issues that I don't. I don't think anyone else is going to feel or under, understand, but I felt it. It's just like, I liked the Hispanic culture stuff a lot. Like I liked their Hispanic family, but I do think the writing really went too over the top with trying to put Hispanic culture into it. In my opinion, well, it didn't I feel very natural. Yeah. That's what I was referring to. Okay. That's good. I'm glad it wasn't just me. Cause yeah, I just felt like there was times where it was just too much, like too obvious. Like George Lopez is like, like they're talking about aliens. Right. And he's like, Oh yeah, I don't like that term. Like, it's just things like that, where I was like, <clears throat> like, I get it. They're Hispanic. Like, I know you don't have to like make that joke that you don't like the term aliens or he's eating tacos at the beginning. Like all those types of things. I was like, you're trying to hit all the Hispanic things. And I just, I wish it was more natural and more, I don't know. Has Cisco seen it yet? No, but I'm sure. I'm he'll curious. Love it. I'm sure he'll love it. I'm curious. Cause I, I don't know much about Hispanic stuff. So I didn't yeah. know if it was over the top or not. I don't know if Hispanic families are like that or not. But like the, that's why I'm curious. Like I was just like, I don't yeah, know. it's like, mixed. It's, it's mixed. mixed. So there's, yeah. I've talked to some Hispanics that really loved it, and I've talked to some that have said the same thing Kendrick and I said. That it was yeah. just like a little too much at times. Too much. Okay. 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 Yeah. I mean, my family, yeah, I come from a Hispanic family and stuff. And it's just like, yeah, like they, they act that way. Like the, then like being in the, in the cars being like, Hey, like, good luck at your thing today. Like that's coming, going together everywhere. Like that's all Hispanic stuff. But when they get down to the writing and the jokes, it was like, yeah, that's constantly just trying to put it down your throat. Just like, here's a Hispanic, Hispanic, Hispanic. And it's like, dude, like that's, you know, it's not that obvious all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like their behavior. And that's why I said, I, that's why I said, I almost felt like some of it was almost Expensive in a way yeah like, right technical. okay that's what i thought too because i i grew up literally like in a hispanic home yeah. for most of my like 13 years of my life i was mm-hmm. there 90 percent of the time like yeah. 
I, I saw all of that so much mm-hmm. that like I saw some of this and, and I also spent tons of times with, with grandma, you know, and I like, yeah. I'm like the cliches are there, but at the same time, it just was like too much. Yeah. Like, and it wasn't, it wasn't them either. That's the problem. I hope no one yeah. thinks that it was the actors. No, it wasn't. It was the writing. It was, it was the writing. writing. It wasn't, it wasn't them. And for the most the part, it was still really funny and it still hit. I think the best family character to me was the dad. Yeah. Agreed. He was the best written for sure. I agree with that too. Yep. But he was very, yeah, very accurate. Like that's, yeah, totally his panic dad right there. And same with the mom, I'd say. But yeah, everybody else too over the top. One thing I do have to say is just like, I, I don't know. Like the reviews before this were just like pretty, pretty hyping it up. No one was saying this was like a fantastic movie or anything or one of the best movies, but some people were like, oh, this is a phenomenal origin story or oh, it's, uh, it's really a good time and stuff. And I, I don't know. I just think it was overhyped. Like I, I don't know. I don't get why people overhyped it so much. Well, I think we it's it in as overhyped, but like people were giving it four out of five. So yeah. It's still too high, but I'll, I think people were reading it as like it was going to be a four and a half or five out of five movie, which I it just wasn't close to that. No, I think it's a good Blue Beetle. Like it, like I would, it's good enough to see, I think. Like it's not yeah. like bad or anything, but I think it's a good enough movie for people to go see and should see. Especially yeah. since Blue Beetle will be a big character in the DCU, but like just as a movie, like by itself, like it's, not it's just nothing like crazy, like special, like or anything, like not nothing no. like over the top. But because of Blue Beetle in the DCU, like it's good enough. I think, like personally, yeah. I think like that it's good enough for the DCU and for the character to be in the DCU. I agree. But like, for, good thing it's not. I don't. Th- it's not good enough to be the first DCU movie, though. The Superman will be, which I'm happy it is. But I think just yeah. Blue Beetle, like the character and how. Miguel or Exola, whatever his name is, yeah. uh, was good enough that people should go see yeah. who it is, who this movie to is, and get comfortable with him for the future. I agree with that. But just, I, I was reading first reactions to it when it came out, and it was just, I don't know, people felt something with it that I just did not feel at all. Yeah, so I, agree. I, <laughs> I don't know. I went in with the expectations that it's like, yeah, I'm expecting a good movie. And that's pretty much what it was, you know, but didn't it didn't wow me or anything at all. They're like, oh, it's a really fresh movie that we haven't gotten in a while. I'm like, not really. It, it wasn't. No, it was very. Yeah. I think part of the thing that ruined it for me, to be honest, too, is how many people have seen Iron Man or Spider Man Homecoming like recently, recently, right before watching this. Like, I guarantee if you watch Homecoming, those bro. and go watch this movie, you will enjoy it. just saw Homecoming. Us. Yeah. Yeah. I had, I had just watched Iron Man. I had just watched Captain America. I'd watched so much of Thor. Like, this movie Origin was stories. Just, Yeah. It was way too much for me of the, the cliche. Yeah. You yeah, know, you've got got his character coming to his arc. One thing I didn't yeah. like too is they didn't play enough into Blue Beetle's growth either, which they naturally just don't do a lot. Um, sure. And then you've got are you going to accept your responsibilities? Fights that just don't quite make too much sense. Like the original fight, I'm like, okay, so you got you got a scarab who's like unbeatable, like fighting a human robot. like how how are you supposed to win that fight like it just didn't even make sense to me like like zolo and his suit they were literally indestructible just about in my opinion that first scene i'm like so we're supposed to be his to me i was like part of the problem i had and i guess i didn't bring this up but like where is zolo's part as blue beetle at the beginning of the movie like i'm like once he's in the blue beetle suit it's basically just the scarab like he's That's the true. sheriff was That's the true. one fighting that first fight. Like, so nothing to yeah. do. now they did play right. later and he did have to kick in. But right. I there's no, I, th- I thought the same thing. I thought the same thing. So not yeah. needed. Like the first it was all fight like, felt yeah. super stupid. I don't know. That's just me. And they, they, like, it, it looked good. Before. Yeah, exactly. Like it yeah. looked good and the action sequence was cool. Like it looked sweet. But yeah. as far as the meaning about it, like I just, it made yeah. no sense to me. I agree with that. That flopped. That flopped. <laughs> yep. Any other things you guys have to say about the movie? There's one thing I want to say, actually. I just, how did the uncle know how to fly the Beatles? I, yep. I was going to bring that up. That too. was, yeah. I, yeah, that didn't I, just, yeah. That, I just, I just, I just, I just noticed a bit. small thing. There were it's just like writing conveniences for sure. The tons. rock pile, bro, when this, the girls could yeah. have kept on running, but then she stopped for no reason and then pushed her. I'm like, if you guys kept on running, there would have been, been fine. Been fine too, too many writing yeah. conveniences but for sure. Yeah. So that's another yeah. thing. But a typical, typical, movie, so. typical, typical. Yeah. <laughs> that's how it goes. Of course, 
Yeah, uh, but it's a movie great. to go see. Like you said, I feel like we're crapping yeah. on it. Like it was still a good movie. You're, there's there's a scene there. I guess now that we're talking spoilers, like that scene with the dad yeah. when he passes, it it was yeah, like really good, really really weird because the movie up to that point, I was not impressed. I felt yeah. no connection to the movie at all. And then that yeah, scene no, happened, no. and I was like, "Yeah, dang, that was that, a good scene." Agreed. Agreed. And the music. Oh, that's another thing. I guess also the, the score was really oh. really good, actually. Music slap. That's true. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's what carries that scene. The little yeah. slow-mo in that scene and like the way that Zolo came into it too, um, came flying in like all bad A. They played really well into his, you know, mad character. I get he's not an anti-hero, so I can't really be mad he didn't kill the guy at the end yeah. of the movie. But like, yeah, it, it was, they, they played into these emotions really, really well. And I think a lot of that had to do with the music. It was really well done. Did you guys like the intro? Of the Blue Beetle intro when they I killed like, all the scarabs like, going out. I, I did. Sick intro it sick. The first Blue Beetle. I like the intro. I thought that was pretty good. It looked sick. Um, post credit scene. There was just one, right? Was there two? Because I only saw one. Well, no, there were two. There, there was, was two. Uh, I didn't stay uh, for the was, second. But it was a, what was it the was second Hispanic, one? It was just a Hispanic culture thing. It wasn't anything to do oh, with the movie. Okay. It was like That's an old. Special. The guy they old showed. Show they showed the guy earlier in the movie. The red looking bug guy. Yeah. The cartoon. Um, I don't know if you remember. Did you, you saw him in the movie. Old yeah, okay, they, yeah, they barely yeah. showed him a little bit. Um, but yeah, <laughs> you, they, it was just him in the. Okay. But hey, can we talk about just real quick? Jason Sudeikis has been confirmed as the person that Angel wants to play uh, Ted Corp. He confirmed that. Really, the director mm-hmm. said that the director said the because I don't know, have you seen that it's been floating around. Everybody was looking at that picture of Ted and they were like, "That looks like Jason Sudeikis. It looks like him." No. So everybody's um, been flowing that around mm-hmm. the internet. Um, the director came out and said that that's who he wants to play. When he does a sequel to this movie, he wants Ted Cord to be played by Jason Sudeikis. And I was like, that's perfect. I would love that. So, yeah, I think all I'll say is if all the Beatles were alive and they watched this movie, they would think it's generic. That's all I'm say. Right. Yep. Nice. I can't wait for Black Beetle because Black Beetle's sick in Young Justice, at least. But we'll see how he is because Black's the best. Oh. That's Blue Beetle. Would you guys recommend to go see it? I would recommend to go see it, even though three and a, three out of five generic movie. But would you guys recommend to go see it? Yeah. In theaters, you would. Okay, nice, Ben. Yeah. A little close to the no. camera there. Yeah, a little. Like a, uh, what'd you say? Would you recommend people to go see Blue Beetle in theaters? Um. Yeah, I would. It's worth it. Nope. It's it's totally worth it. I'd warn them it's generic though. So I'd warn yeah. them. Like I wouldn't expect. But I'd say go. But I'd warn them. So now we're going to get into Cineverse news. So this one's interesting. Thor 5 is in development and looks like Taika Waititi is going to direct it. Um, and he's revealed that the villain will be much stronger than Hela. Like, okay, cool. <laughs> like, that's cool. That's it should not be. what like, I wanted to hear. I'm, that's cool. Pisses me off. Yeah. He should have said, we're going to make a more serious Thor, but still have fun at the same time like Ragnarok was. But okay. To be completely like, honest, I don't want. I want very little humor. I'm gonna be completely honest. I don't want Tiger with Didi at all. It just I want it needs the Ragnarok. Humor. It just needs the Ragnarok type of humor. I don't know. I think it's too much of a risk. Give it a serious Thor movie. Give Chris Hem- we we've seen in extraction movies what Chris Hemsworth can do in a serious role. Do good writing for a serious grounded Thor movie that is freaking intense. The stakes are high, he's getting beaten to a pulp. Give me something like that. That's what I want. That's and true. I think that's what I was I want out of the MCU right I now with with this. Yeah. I just think we're, the reason I say very little humor is I think in order to get back to a happy medium on humor, kind of like Ragnarok was, we've got to do a reset on it. I don't think we can yeah. do Agreed. medium humor movies right now. I just think that MCU yeah. has failed at doing that. For we sure, need a reset sure. on the humor. I um, think uh, Infinity War type Thor, like how the Russo's brothers did Thor and Infinity War. I, I would like that tone Thor. of Thor. Because it's, it's enough Thor. humor, but it's, it's a lot of seriousness. Yeah, because he sees the guardians and it's really funny with these things with yeah, the guardians. But then he also then has, he has become moments. serious. Yeah. No, yeah. Right. I like, I like that. that. Yep. And I just know that Chapman would not like to fight. Story. Yeah, Chapman would not like to fight Hella. Because we we discussed that. <laughs> Don't want to get poked in some holes. <laughs> James Gunn isn't making a young Superman movie, despite the Henry Cavill re- uh recast. I thought this was interesting because it's a brand new Superman. So I feel like you'd like make it a coming of age <laughs> Superman movie. But apparently yeah. Superman will already be like Superman kind of. Well, what do you guys, like, weird. Weird. guys think about that? It kind of shocked also, me, to be honest. People are, 
well, people are playing, his original quotes didn't say that it was going to be um, the verbiage wasn't exactly what people freaking out as it, his original quote when he talked about it was that it would be a early Superman, I think was what his verbiage was, not that it would be a yeah. young Superman. Yeah. So I think, I think people read yeah. into early Superman as we're young. getting a young Superman. Well, yeah, and ev- everyone assumed everyone assumed firing Henry Cavill meant younger Superman because everyone just said, Henry, he must just be too old. That's the only reason you wouldn't keep him. And so yeah. I think that's why everyone said, oh, it must be a younger Superman because he was... So people have Superman. definitely read into it because people want answers so bad that people are reading into it too much, I think. But Yeah. I still don't change anything from it. I think he's going to do a great Superman. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not worried about yeah. that for sure. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. I agree. People forget out too much over this stuff. I'm like, it's it's still the same. It's James Gunn writing Superman. It's going to be great. Like, I have no doubt about that. I don't either. But. Percy Jackson, Olympians. Did you guys see the 30 second teaser? Yeah, I'm pumped. I'm pumped. It's pretty good. Like, I, the cinematography looks good. I'm worried. Disney, we'll see. It's <laughs> sad to say because Disney's used to make good stuff. But <laughs> and we'll Peter see. Pan and Wendy just. Mm. Yeah. Mando season three and. <laughs> Yeah, but um, December twentieth, two episode premiere. So excited for that! I, I think it'll books. be good. You guys read the so, books? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was my childhood. It's it's my it's my favorite like book series of all time. So like yeah, for me, it's amazing me too. I actually think Percy Jackson Lightning Thief was a great start of the series. The movie that they did it, it missed a lot of big key points, which is why it dropped the down. Aries in they, person. Yeah, the Aries in person was that that was a horrible miss. But like they had the right actors and actresses, like it was perfectly casted. Sure. Perfect. And so I'm, I'm just, yeah. I'm worried because of the diversity stuff. Not that I don't know like yeah. diversity. I do, I I do agree with that. I did it. I I'm worried that, that it's going to mess with yeah. the vibe of the show and the vibe of the books connecting. The only, the only thing that holds me together with this is that Rick Riordan is on set yeah. every single well, day. Like yeah, he, yeah, he's yeah. not missed a day. He's really involved. That's the only yeah. thing that holds me together is knowing that he's there. Yeah. It's like full of writing Ahsoka, apparently. I mean, right. It's like, it's like that. <laughs> oh, but, uh, yeah. I, I don't it's know. I'm going to be good. Tell about Let's it. See. Cause it's so dear to my heart. Like yeah. I really actually won't watch it all the way through. If the, if the show's bad, like, cause it just, it's, yeah. it's so dear to my heart. I don't want to retain it too much. Like if it's, if yeah. it starts out that bad, like it's just not good that I'm not going to finish it. Cause I don't want to take it. Agreed. Oh, um, Kurt and Wyatt Russell to play the same character in Godzilla spinoff. Did you guys see like the photos of the Godzilla spinoff yeah. or, or anything? Mm-hmm. I saw one picture. Yeah, I think that's dope. So Wyatt Russell, yeah, his dope. son, the Captain America guy in Falcon it's Winter dope. Soldier. So it's him, and then obviously everyone knows Kurt Russell. So I, it looks dope. Like that would be sick. Like, could you imagine like being an actor though, and you play like a younger character, then your dad plays that older character. Like I thought that would be dope to be with your dad and stuff and on like set and everything. So, and it looks good. The Godzilla looks good and stuff. So I'm excited to see. And it's on TV and they've they're been fun. hitting a lot. So I think they'll do it. Yeah. Yep. Barbie surpasses the dark Knight to become the highest grossing domestic release in Warner Bros history. Crazy. Who would have thought? It's just because the bigger <sighs> you guys predicted more. Barbie? There's more people to see it. You know, I would have not. It's not, yeah, better movie. It's, it's not a better movie, but it's just bigger population. population. Yeah. More population yeah. for sure. Yeah. More kids. Yep. That's re- that's ridiculous. Now we're going to go from Barbie to Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer is now Christopher Nolan's fourth highest grossing movie, passing Interstellar, to join the top five highest grossing IMAX movies of all time. Crazy. And then this part's weird. Logan Paul. I like Logan Paul. I'm a big fan of Prime. I like his YouTube videos. Can't wait for him to knock out Dylan Dennis October 14th. But He's gonna. here's an L from Logan Paul. He walked out of Oppenheimer. The best thing I've seen I'm since sorry, he said bro. that was somewhat because he said it was too much. It was just all talking is what he said. And then somebody replied back to his Instagram post or, what, or no, the podcast post. And it said, wait, but you do a podcast. It's all talking. It's a dumb, it's a dumb reason to walk out of it. Yeah, especially that one. L, bro. I'm sorry. That's a big that's L. L. That, I know you're trying to be different. Best movies of the decade. It is trying to be different. Yeah. I, I, I admire yeah. him and I love the guy, but like he's definitely just he's trying to be a hot take for that. For sure. Yeah, for sure. So hopefully Prime still sponsors us someday. I'm still hoping for that. So yeah, yeah, me dude. too. Me too. I'll be dope. We'd be good uh group for them. Visual effects crews at Mars Diverse, Studios for sure. have set dates for a vote to unionize. <laughs> Voting took place today, actually. At really? Two, September I didn't know that. 11th. 
Okay. Yeah, it goes to September 11th, and then ballots will be counted on September 12th. And I think this is good because Marvel Studios apparently like the visual effects team and everything get put through like the ringer and everything. And they're I mean, most sure. of the Marvel movies are like a lot of visual effects and everything. Oh, yeah. stuff. So I'm oh, glad they're unionizing, and I hope they get what pay what they deserve. Any thoughts you guys have? Mm, no, it's good. It's totally good. Agree with uh, they deserve it. Yeah, like man. Like they do such hard work. Like that work is hard. I'm sorry. Like actors, yeah, they go through hard stuff. But man, being a VFX person, dude, that's so much time and so much work. Yeah. Sixteen hour days, apparently. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, David, I don't know how to say his last name. Das Malashin. I don't know how to say his name. I'm sorry. Wants das to play Malkin. James Bond. Das Malkin. Okay. Wants to play James Bond villain. Uh, it's the polka dot man. If you guys don't know who that is. In the Suicide Squad, oh, okay. I think he, I think he's, he'd be a great villain. I think yeah, he fits, great in has the look. Too. Yeah, good actor. I think I think he'd be a great villain. I'd agree. agree. He's got the he's great in prisoners. If you guys have seen his creatures, yeah, I mean prisoners, yeah. uh, polka dot, like he's yeah. He kind of just pops up everywhere, dude. Like I, I sometimes just watch a movie and he just shows up for like. He was an Oppenheimer too. Yeah, yeah, and I'm just like, oh, he's there. Like it's it's yeah. weird. Like everyone knows like the face. Like, yeah, he's never like a like, star. Everyone, yeah. He's just always there. Everyone knows who he is, though. Yeah. yeah. He would be a creepy Bond villain, though. So, yeah. I just wonder who Bond's going to be. That's the real question. Let's see. National Let's Cinema see. Day is this Sunday, August 27th. Go see a bunch of movies because they're $4 tickets. So, if you want to see some movies that you haven't seen, like Blue Beetle, yeah. Oppenheimer, Barbie, all those good stuff, $4. So, go see them. Shout out. Don't go shout see out Megaplex. Yeah. Don't go oh, see Oppenheimer. Shout Oppenheimer has talking, Jared. so don't go see it. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, but if you're in Utah, Megaplex is just a place to be. Four dollar tickets for sure. Four dollar tickets. Yeah. They've already said so. Yep. Don't 